on this month's one-on-one conversation, I am going to share with you my top five tips to make in-person visits super successful. Hello and welcome to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. This is your host, Greg Payne, coming at you from Studio 12. This podcast is about being the best possible grandpa you can be, focusing on what it is to be a grandpa and how we can all share that experience together for our grandchildren. Before we get started, I want to remind you again that my children's book, My Grandpa's Grandpa, is now 20% off when you order through my website cool-grandpa.us. I have this special sale going on through Father's Day, so make sure you go to my website, order your book, and be sure to present that to your favorite father or grandfather. The other thing I want to remind you of is my collaboration with More Than Grand. More Than Grand is a great resource for new parents and new grandparents, so be sure to check out the links in the show notes as well as the link over in my affiliate section of my website. Listeners to the Cool Grandpa Podcast get 10% off any products that you might purchase over at morethangrand.com. Okay, now here are my top five tips to make your in-person visit super powerful and enjoyable for everybody. Now, there's definitely more than five, but I like to think that these five really lay the groundwork for everything else. So number one, communicate the dates and the ETAs of your arrival and departure with your grandchildren and, of course, their parents. The parents are definitely wanting to know, you're coming in on a Friday or a Monday. Is that Monday morning? Is it Monday afternoon? Is it Monday night? What are those dates and times when they can expect to have you arrive? This also helps them understand when you might want to get up early on the day of departure, take everybody out to the IHOP and have a big breakfast or something before you jump in the car and drive off to the airport, the train station, or just drive on home. So be sure to work with your adult children to really plan out when they can expect you to arrive, when they can expect you to depart. This may seem a little bit over the top as far as the ETAs go, but I really think that it helps the family out so that, you know, they can pick up the house and they know that they have the morning time to do that versus having everything ready the night before only to have you show up at 9 p.m. the next evening. So make sure you communicate those dates. Also make sure that, uh, you know, it's not going to cause any issues for them. Maybe they're coming back from a trip themselves and they're not going to be at the home, so they've got to leave a key over at the neighbor's house. Whatever that might be, it's a great way to make sure that your arrival and departure go as smoothly as possible. The next tip for you is find out what the parents have going on when you're there. Are they having a business trip come up? Are they having a neighborhood picnic? Is there a big swim meet that's going on? Is there any kind of adult social with their church group or neighborhood group? Or is there a softball tournament somebody's participating in? Find out what they have going on so that you can also either plan to attend those events and be shown off as, hey, here's my mom and dad, or know that, hey, maybe you're going to have some babysitting expectations rolled in while you're having a visit so that the parents can go off and do their thing and enjoy their time away. The other part of finding out what's going on is to find out what the grandkids have going on. Do they have any soccer games? Is there a rugby match? Is there anything that you need to be aware of that could cause an inconvenience or a change in plans? If you plan to show up and during the summer, figure Wednesday is going to be a great day that we're going to go to a battlefield site or a state park or whatever, you want to make sure that you understand that you're not double booking the grandkids in setting expectations that's going to cause conflicts. Maybe they have swim lessons 
Wednesday afternoon, and the parents really don't want them to miss swim lessons. And so maybe you have to adjust the day that you go to the park or the day that you do a certain activity. Once you find out what the parents have going on, what the grandkids have going on, be sure to put that information into your smartphone if you use a smartphone for calendaring or put it into your little day planner, your calendar, whatever you do to keep track of important appointments and dates. Make sure you get that information in there as quickly as you find out that information. So the first step is make sure you communicate the dates and the ETAs of your arrival and departure. Number two, make sure you find out what's going on with the parents as well as with the grandkids. Number three, ask what the parents and grandkids need. Are there any projects around the house? Does your daughter-in-law want to have a new deck put in? And maybe while you're on site, you can work with your son or son-in-law or the contractors or your daughter, whatever it is, to help put a new deck out on the backyard. Maybe there's some other projects around that they could really use some help with. So ask. Make sure that you've got that uh, you know, clearly communicated so that you don't show up and then all of a sudden the expectation is that you're going to help build a deck when you thought you were going to be lounging at the pool all week. Part of this, too, is to find out what's going on with the grandkids and what do they need. Are they working on any skills around t-ball, around soccer, around swimming? Maybe camp skills. Maybe they're going to summer camp. So maybe they could use a little extra help from grandpa about how to start a fire with a single match. Maybe they could use some help with learning how to cook some scrambled eggs or a hamburger in a a pan over a fire. Whatever that might be, that would be a great opportunity to find out where you can help and have a connection point with those grandkids just by helping them build up their own skill set while they're participating in sports and hobbies, recreation, whatever's going on. The first tip. Make sure you communicate those dates and ETAs as early as possible. Make sure that you find out what the parents have going on and what the grandparents, what the grandkids have going on while you're on site. Third tip, ask the parents and the grandkids what do they need help with. The fourth tip, what behavior or life skills are the parents working on with the grandkids? Now, When you have younger grandkids, this is sometimes as simple as being able to say your pleases and your thank yous, making sure that you're able to sit up properly at the at the table to eat. It might be, hey, keep an ear out, make sure they're flushing the toilet when they're all done. Whatever these things are, ask so that you can help reinforce what the parents are doing. Now The other thing that you want to ask the parents on is what kind of reinforcement, if any, do they want you to take? Meaning that if they were to, the the grandkids, if they were to kind of break the rules, do you just want us as grandparents to tell you about what went on? Or do you want us to give them maybe a little bit of a scolding, a little bit of a talking to? You know, after all, we're not necessarily the disciplinarians. But do you want us to kind of correct them a little bit about like, hey, don't slouch at the table when we're eating. Don't chew with your mouth open. Hey, uh, you know, your mom said to do this. Your mom said to do that. Your dad said to do this. Your dad said to do that. Find out what kind of reinforcement and gentle guidance that the parents want you to take. And be sure if they say, hey, just let me know what happened when you get home. Okay, leave it at that. That's all you have to do. Just inform the parents about how the day went or how the afternoon went, whatever that is. Then let them have those discussions and conversations with the grandkids. So the first tip, communicate your dates and your ETAs on arrivals and departures as early as you can. Two, find out what the parents have going on and what the grandkids have going on. Make sure you put that into your phone or into your calendar. Number three, 
ask what the parents or the grandkids need some help and support with. Could be projects, it could be babysitting, it could be working with the kids on skills that they're developing while playing youth sports or hobbies. Number four, what behavior or life skills are the grandkids working on that the parents would appreciate some you know, extra help with while you have the grandkids out for an ice cream. Number five, plan fun activities for yourself. I can't tell you how many times I have to remind people that, hey, we're working grandparents, at least some of us are. When we go to see our kids, as much as we love them, this is our vacation time or this is our personal time away from work. And so we want to be sure to do some activities for ourselves. Make sure that you've got some fun packed into your time away so that you can go do some fun things that you want to do. Now, I'm not telling you just to show up and use the kid's house or apartment for a base of operations where you're gone all the time and only back in the evenings. No, what I'm saying is, Plan something fun for you, and then if you want, invite the adult kids or the parents along, or invite the grandkids along, or everybody. Heck, it might be a fun trip that everybody would enjoy. An example of this is in a few weeks, I'm going to go up to Virginia to go see my son and my awesome daughter-in-law and my granddaughter. One of the activities that I've planned is for us to go up and see a Baltimore Orioles baseball game. Now, I wanted to go see a baseball game, whether it was the Nationals or the Orioles. And let's be honest, traditionally these haven't been the two best teams. But it's a fun time out to a ballpark with a team that's not local to me. And, you know, a fun day at the ballpark is a fun day at the ballpark. What I did was let my son and my daughter-in-law know that I had this intention of going to the ballpark and I asked if they would like to go. The other thing that I have planned for when I'm up in Virginia is I'm going to go visit the Fredericksburg or Chancellorsville battlefield. It's one that I haven't been to recently and yeah I am kind of a history geek so there's that but I've been to Antietam quite a bit. I've been to Gettysburg quite a bit lately. I've been to Harper's Ferry, Bull Run, some of the other historic sites, but I haven't been to this battlefield in a long, long time. So I'm going to take some time and I'm going to go check out this battlefield. And my wife is probably going to come along, my son might come along, and my granddaughter might come along. But this is an activity that makes taking some vacation time rewarding for myself so that I can enjoy this time off, that I'm not tied to just babysitting or just doing family activities. Not that I don't love family activities, but it is important that grandparents and grandfathers in particular put some time for themselves into the schedule. Now, I do have a good friend of mine Carrie Byrne, who runs the Long Distance Grandparent Society, and she has a ton of tips that you could take a look at for planning your in-person visit when you're a remote or a long-distance grandparent. And some of these things are even great ideas for even if you live in the same town, you can follow some of these tips and tricks that she shares with us. So, Be sure to go to the Long Distance Grandparent Society, check out what Carrie has going on over there, and find out all the fun tips and tricks, lessons learned, that other long distance grandparents have shared with that group. So if you're taking a trip this summer to go visit those grandkids, follow these five tips and I'm sure that you're going to have an awesome experience visiting those grandkids visiting with their parents, and just an overall great vacation time. And if you do go on site and you follow these five tips, do me a favor, leave me a comment in the show notes below. Let me know how that trip went for you. 
Let me know what kind of fun activities you went on. Let me know what kind of adventures you took those little grandkids out on. I'd sure love to hear how you are being an awesome grandfather. So, until next time, remember to stay cool. Thank you for listening to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do me a favor and share it with a friend. That's the best way you can help us to expand our community, as well as get the news out about how valuable grandpas are in the lives of those kids. If you'd like to leave me a comment or shoot me a potential topic for this uh, podcast, please go to www.cool-grandpa.us. Look for the comments tab, fill it out, hit submit, It's as easy as that. Until next time, remember to stay cool.